Hello people, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to talk about that how do you do a reverse filter context in a nested context transition while working with a virtual table in time intelligence on a calculation group. Sounds fun? <laughs> All right, I'm sure you understand that I was trying to play a joke on you. In this particular video, I'd like to talk about a few technical tips and a few non-technical mental framework tips to help you make your journey with DAX a lot more structured and a bit easier as well. Let's start. All right, I've got five technical tips. Let's just start with the first one. The first one is input output parameters. When you're writing a DAX statement or any particular DAX function, please do focus on what goes inside of the formula, which is nothing but the input parameter and what comes out of it. For example, if you take a look at the SUMX function, the SUMX function first part is a table. Now, when you're doing your SUMX function, obviously, whatever you put in the first part of the SUMX function cannot be anything other than a table. And the second part of SUMX is expression, which is nothing but a calculation, which should give you a single value output. Now, although you did provide a table as an input inside of the SUMX function, but the output of the SUMX function is a single scalar value. So, all that I'm trying to say is that whenever you're writing your DAX functions, please do focus on what is going inside of the formula and what is coming out of the formula. That is going to help you build your understanding that what the formula is asking for. Is it a table? Is it a single value, a column, anything like that? Or what is the formula giving you as an output? Is that a table? Is that a, a calculation? Is there a single expression? And things like that. And once you do understand what comes out of the formula and what goes inside of the formula, you will be able to use the formulas correctly at the right places. So when DAX is asking you for a table, you will obviously use some table expressions. And when DAX is asking you for scalar output or single value output or input, you're going to provide a single value input. I have seen a ton of people making mistakes and not able to realize that what are they writing in which parts of the formula. If you understand that, you're going to actually save yourself a lot of time while learning DAX. Tip number two understanding DAX functions. Now, whenever you're trying to learn different DAX functions, there are like 200 functions available in DAX and it's not possible for you to learn all the functions. I would highly recommend that you learn only the key functions which are there. But let's just say that you, when you're trying to learn the different DAX functions, it's not recommended from my side that you memorize the functions. I would rather recommend you that you understand the behavior of the function. For example, let's just consider a filter function. In the first part of the filter function, you write the table. And in the second part of the filter function, you write whatever you want to filter in or out of the table. The filter function is going to return you a table as an output. Now, this is the behavior of the filter function. Now, whenever you're trying to solve any particular problem in Power BI, you would have to recall that what did you learn in terms of functions and how do they behave? And the relevant behavior can be plugged in to solve any particular problem. So my recommendation is that you start to understand functions from the behavior perspective and then use that particular behavior to solve different problems in Power BI. Technical tip number three, measures are single value output and tables are non-single value or table outputs. Now, whenever you're trying to write any particular measure, please understand that the measure should necessarily return you a single value as an output. However, you can maneuver through a lot of tables within the measure while you're you know, performing any complex calculation. But finally, the output of any particular measure should be one single scalar value output. However, uh, on the other side, if you're working with a table and trying to create a table in Power BI or a query in Power BI, that query should not return you a single value as an output. It should rather return you a full table with multiple rows or multiple columns possibly as an output. Now, this is a behavior that I have seen a lot of people going wrong with and they do not understand that measures should return you a single value output and tables should return you a table output. This is again going to save you a lot of time while working with DAX. Technical tip number four, master the three stage DAX evaluation process. Now, when I was learning DAX, this particular concept, the three stage DAX evaluation process came very, very handy in order for me to understand what exactly is going on under the hood of DAX. And I talk about this particular concept very, very extensively in my DAX online training program. Now, what is this particular concept? This concept is a simple three stage process in which DAX evaluates any particular formula, which is nothing but applying the filters, 
which is nothing but the filter context, which is something that you would want to learn. Second is doing the calculations on the filter data. And then third is the passing the result back to the visual. Now, obviously I cannot start to explain you filter context right now on this particular video. I have another video on that in case you do not understand what filter context is, what row context is, what context transition is. I'm going to leave a link to a bunch of videos that I have done in the past and you should definitely take a look at that. But all that I'm trying to say is that in order for you to create, edit, modify, or do any sort of sophisticated sophisticated calculations in Power BI, I would highly recommend that you please understand thoroughly the three stage tax evaluation process. Tip number five, think tables. Now this is beyond the standard sum count sum x calculations. In case you're trying to perform any complex calculations, the way to be able to solve most problems in Power BI is to start thinking in terms of a table. If you're able to create the relevant underlying table that contains the values, obviously you'll be able to largely perform the calculation that you're after. Now, Power BI is not like Excel in case you're coming from an Excel background. There is no cell referencing. There is no A5, B2, B10 in Power BI. You just have tables. So you have to get skilled enough to start to think in terms of underlying tables, which are going to contain the relevant problems, relevant values to be able to attack the problems that you have. Before we move on to the mental tricks, I'd like to give a quick shout out about my upcoming live Power BI training program. I still have a few seats available. If you haven't checked it out, I suggest that you please take a look at that. In that particular program, a bunch of people around the world are going to come live on a Teams call and we'll do some real time problem solving in Power BI, especially on the hard parts of Power BI, which is Power Query, Data Modeling and DAX. If you're the type of person who learns a lot better while sitting along with the trainer and gets your doubts sorted, get some homework, do some real time work, practice along with the trainer in the training session, you're going to have a phenomenal experience learning from me. Thanks so much. And let's just move on to the mental framework tips. All right, part two, which is where we'll talk about the mental framework and the study style tips that are going to help you commit to this journey of learning tax. All right, the first tip that I have for you is community and variety. Whenever you're working in your own job, obviously after a certain point in time, you're going to get really good at solving the problems of your own data because you have repeatedly worked over those problems. How do you build a variety of problem solving into your own learning process. Now, one of the best ways to build variety into your own learning process is to go to Power BI community and start to take a look at different problems that people are facing around the world, either simple or very, very sophisticated that you can actually approach to solve. Not only can you learn to solve the problems while providing a solution, but you can also learn from other people who are trying to solve the same problem. This is a phenomenal approach while trying to build variety of problem solving into your own learning process. Not only are you going to learn to solve different problems, but you'll also provide back to the community where you've learned it from. Tip number two, really, really important projectize your learning. Whenever you're working on any particular project, obviously you will have a start date, you will have an end date, you will have a schedule, you will have the tasks, you will have a strategy, you will have some notes around that particular project as well. Similarly, you'll also have to projectize your entire journey of learning DAX. You'll have to make some notes, you'll have to have a calendar, you'll have to have a time committed every single day to committing yourself and doing the work that it takes to learn the DAX. Please do not leave learning DAX on whims and fancies of your mood. You can pick it up whenever you like and you don't pick it up and you don't like. You have to commit doing the work every single day. Treat your learning like any other project in your own life. And I'm sure this is actually going to do very, very well. Final point don't get too comfortable if you're solving most of the problems. Now, if you're able to knock off problem after problem after problem, you may start to feel that DAX is beneath you and you've learned most of the things. Don't start to think that way. Now, it still surprises me till this day when I pick up consulting assignment, almost every single project that I pick up has this nuance problem that I struggle and challenge to solve. Now, which is actually a good thing that simply means that there is a still a lot of journey that I have to go in order to get really, really good at it. And I'm not really sure if that day is ever going to come, but there are far too many nuanced problems out in the world that are really, really going to challenge your learning. So don't get too comfortable. All right, that's been it. A few tips and tricks around learning DAX and probably making your journey of learning DAX a bit more easier. Please do let me know what are a few challenges that you typically face while learning DAX? Where do you typically get stuck? And of course, I'd like to give a quick shout about my upcoming live Power BI training program that I spoke about earlier. In case you are interested to learn from me, sit with me on a live training session. Please do check out the link at the bottom of this video. 
Thanks so much and do post a comment about your journey as to what is hard in your journey and I'll be happy to reply. Thanks so much for watching this and I will catch you guys in the next one. Cheers. Bye. Hello people, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to talk about that how do you do a, a, how do you do a reverse filter context in a nested context transition on a time on a virtual table while doing while doing time intelligence calculations in calculations groups. What the f is this, man? Okay, let's just start again.